Welcome and thank you for your interest. My name is Johannes Seifert. In this video, my colleague Christy Alabat and I will be presenting our research paper, The Upside Stencil Optimization Techniques Applied to Explicit UDE Methods on Modern Architectures. As tuning test case, we studied explicit methods used to compute the numerical approximation to the solutions of UDE systems. UDE systems often have a stencil like right hand side, which can be tuned using Yars side. In general, many methods exist to solve ODE systems, such as the Euler method or Runge-Kutter methods. Here we use a particular Runge-Kutter method called Perk method. Perk methods use a four-dimensional loop structure, which allows to derive a large implementation space to select the best implementation from. Still, the question remains which implementation performs best here. A straightforward implementation could, for instance, split all computations into separate, non-overlapping loop kernels. This is the case here. Per correct iteration k, two kernels RHS and LC are required. RHS covers the evaluation of the right-hand side functions and LC covers the linear combination. Kernels app and up are used to compute the next approximation of the solution. Instead of using separate kernels per computation, one could also try to fuse as many computations as possible into one single kernel. This was done here for implementation F. Here we only need two kernels RHS LC and RHS app up. Further, one could also try to only fuse some kernels. For instance, only fuse RHS and LC, which leads us to more implementations. The vast majority of implementations, however, depends on how we actually implement our kernels. Kernel RHS, for instance, has a 4D loop structure, which naturally leads to different kernel variants by interchanging the loops. This gives us, for example, kernels RHSJI and RHSIJ, where the I loop runs over the number of stages of the ODE method and the J loop runs over the three dimensions of the ODE system grid. This already doubles our implementation count. Still, more implementations can be derived through additional tuning and optimizations. This might, for instance, include other transformations such as loop tiling or vector forwarding, might include trying different compiler options, trying different parameter values, such as a block size, or trying to tune for a specific hardware. Done by hand, this is, of course, cumbersome. Luckily, auto-tuning tools such as YASTSET can either carry out the task automatically or at least guide us in the process. Now we will briefly look into the features and working of YASTSET and its backend YASC. YASC is a DSL framework developed under Intel to create high-performance stencil codes. In order to achieve high performance, YASC employs various optimization techniques like spatial tiling, vector folding, and temporal tiling. YASC by design uses a hierarchical tiling concept. For example, for spatial tiling, or so-called spatial blocking, it divides the entire grid to spatial blocks or tiles and tests the stencil computations tile by tile. On the bottom left, you see a high-level code for spatial tiling and on bottom right is an animation of spatial tiling. However, it is well known that the performance achieved by this optimization is highly dependent on the dimensions of the tile. So how do we find the proper tile parameters or other parameters associated with other optimizations like optimal vector folding or optimal tile, temporal tile size? In YASC, as well as in other similar stencil libraries, performance tuning based on runtime testing is employed for this purpose. In order to reduce the search space, this runtime testing is accompanied by optimization algorithms like hill climbing or gradient descent as used in YASC. However, if we have numerous kernels to test, as in the iterative runge kutta method, the runtime testing will become very expensive. This is one of the primary motivation to use an analytical tuning approach, where this cost is practically negligible. For this paper, we will stick to the spatial and vector folding optimization 
to demonstrate this approach. In order to incorporate this analytical tuning idea to YASC, we developed YASC site. The following slide shows the basic working principle of YASC site. Input to YASC site is a high level code of the form shown on the right. YASC site's code generation tool then processes this high level code to a C++ tensor file that is compatible with YASC. This code is further compiled by YASC and linked to YASC site. All this process happens at runtime and is taken care by the just-in-time compilation feature of YASC site. Optionally, this builds can be cached to avoid the compilation overhead when the same stencil is called a second time. The stencil code can then be run using YASC site. In order to support tuning, as mentioned earlier, YASC site uses analytical tuning that are based on performance models. This tuning requires information about the code, which is extracted from the high level code and the user specified stencil properties like the shape of the stencil and radius of the stencil. Further, for performance modeling, it requires the information about the hardware, which is specified using a machine file. The final input to analytical tuning is the tuning option specified by the user, like which cache to aim for spatial blocking. In addition to these features, there are other support features that are implemented in YAS site, like the grid coupling or the ability to change the data layout between stencil computations. The main feature, however, is its analytical performance model and tuning part, which we go into detail in the following slides. Apart from tuning, the other benefit of performance modeling is to understand whether a given code performs optimally on a given hardware. Here in this slide, we see the performance of a kernel from iterative runge kutta method. The kernel here is quite complex and includes four wave 3D stencil of radius 4, that is stencils that are derived from discretization of wave equation. Here we see the performance comparison between an untuned plain version on left and a version with spatial tuning on right. We notice that the performance gain by tuning was almost 25% in this case. However, the question is whether this performance is optimal or can we do better? To answer this, we require performance model and towards the end, we will see how this measured performance compares with the model and find out if there are any optimization potentials left. For performance modeling, we use the execution cache memory model, the so-called ECM performance model. Basically, this ECM model states that the performance of a streaming or stencil code is influenced by two major components. First one is the inco part, which is mostly the time required to transfer data between L1 and registers, denoted as TL1. There are tools like Yaka and Osaka, which does static analysis of assembly code to automatically give out this contribution. The second component is the data transfers between caches and or main memory. So it includes time to transfer data between L2 and L1 cache, L3 and L2 cache, as well as main memory and L3. To determine each of these time contributions, we need to know the amount of data that needs to be transferred between the two memory hierarchies, as well as the rate of transfer between these memory hierarchies. The ratio between the amount of transfer and the rate of transfer gives us the time required to transfer data between the memory hierarchy, which is basically the component of the ECM model. The rate of transfer depends on the hardware. And normally, as a user, we don't have much influence on this. 
while on the other hand the amount of data is dependent on the application or code and can be influenced by coding. So let's have a closer look to see how we can determine the amount of data for a given application. So in this case, the stencil codes generated by YASC. Determining the amount of data transferred between any two memory hierarchies require basically three steps. The first step is to determine the working set size. This is calculated by determining the total size occupied by all data structures that are touched in the code. For a simple example shown below, we have two arrays A and B of length n, which are of double precision elements, that is 8 bytes. This amounts to a total working set size of 16 times n bytes. The memory hierarchy in which this working set fits is the hierarchy in which the data resides. So any hierarchy bigger than this memory hierarchy will not transfer any data. Let's suppose the working set fits in L3 cache, then there won't be any transfer between main memory and L3. In the next step, we need to calculate the minimum amount of data traffic between L3 and other hierarchies above it. This can be easily calculated by accounting one ACES per array in each iteration. This means for the given code, the array A has to be loaded once, amounting to 8 bytes per iteration. And array B has to be written once and also read once due to write allocate amounting to 16 bytes per iteration for array B. This means we have in total 24 bytes per iteration between L3 to L2 and L2 to L1. This calculation assumes any other ACSs on the same array always leads to a hit, which might not be true if the cache size is small to hold the other elements. The correction is made in the third step by accounting for extra transfer that might happen if reuse doesn't take place. The layer condition analysis determines whether the reuse happens in a certain cache or not. For example, if L1 cache doesn't satisfy the layer condition, it means there would be an extra traffic of 16 bytes per iteration between L2 to L1 due to AI-1J and AIJ elements. Let's see more closely how layer conditions look like. The layer condition for a 3D star-shaped stencil with radius R is shown here. If this condition is satisfied, it means the reuse happens in outermost X dimension. The CS term towards right is the cache size and is the only hardware dependent term. The rest of the terms are code dependent. NS is the number of stencil grids that we have in the kernel. R is the radius of the stencil. NR is the number of grids that have pure read operations. And PY and BZ are the size of spatial tiles in YASC. For a given code and hardware, all the terms are fixed except for BY and BZ which can be tuned. The idea of analytical tuning is to solve this equation for BY and BZ to satisfy a certain cache, which is specified by the user. The equation is solved with some constraints, like the BZ parameter has to be as big as possible to ensure minimum cut happens in the innermost Z dimension. If, for example, we set BY and BZ such that L3 cache satisfies this condition, it means the reuse will happen in L3. And therefore, main memory need not transfer the elements that are reused in L3 cache. This consequently decreases the amount of data transfer between memory and L3. And therefore, the time required to transfer data between memory and L3 will also reduce.
since this time to transfer data between memory and L3 is a component of the ECM runtime prediction T, it will subsequently reduce the total runtime for the code and hence increase the performance. From here, we can also see using this approach, we can also get an analytical estimate of the total runtime that is given by T and therefore we get also an analytical estimate to the performance of the code. To demonstrate our analytical tuning approach, we choose two modern architecture from Intel and AMD. The design of both the chips vary considerably. Intel Cascade Lake has a monolithic design with a shared L3 cache and is capable of AVX512 SIMD instructions. While on the other hand, AMD ROM system has a hierarchical design and the L3 cache is shared only among the four cores. The AMD ROM system is only capable of AVX instructions. In contrast to the inclusive cache that we have assumed for modeling, both the systems have a victim L3 cache and therefore the analytical model has to be modified to capture this. This modification is explained in the paper in detail. Here we see the performance comparison between plain untuned version, analytically tuned version and the version tuned with the ASKS runtime testing which uses gradient descent denoted as GD. These measurements were done using Intel Cascade Lake system. The y-axis shows the performance in giga lattice updates per second and the stencil tuned is a 3D stencil derived from wave equation. The three plots show the performance of the stencil for various stencil radius, which correspond to the order of discretization. It can be seen analytical tuning has the same or better performance compared to the one based on actual runtime testing approach of YASC. Moreover, the time required to perform this tuning is negligible for analytical approach compared to the runtime testing method. The tuning time for each case is denoted in red. Similar results can also be seen on AMD ROM system. Another optimization which YASC uses is vector folding. This optimization reduces the L1 to register traffic. The folding dimension is a tuning parameter for vector folding. Depending on the folding dimension, an efficient implementation of this optimization requires a change in data layout. The change in data layout means that a modification in layer condition analysis has to be done in order to reflect this. The modified layer condition analysis can then be incorporated into the ECM performance model to predict and tune the performance analytically. Now, if we come back to the question we asked in the beginning, is my code performing optimal on a given hardware? We see that in this particular case, which was also shown in the beginning, there is a room for optimization since we see the model and the measurements deviate a lot. Therefore, we had a closer inspection of the assembly code and found out that the code was having some unnecessary jumps and integer moves in the innermost loop, costing performance, which was then fixed in a later version of YASC. It has to be said that in most cases, YASC did a very good job in generating highly efficient code that reached 10% within the model. So far, we have seen that YASC site can be used to predict and tune stencil codes and further can also be helpful to identify performance bottlenecks. Next, we will introduce its third key use case as backend of performance-based ranking tools such as Offsite. Offsite is a tuning framework which ranks implementation variants by their performance using analytical performance modeling. The performance of kernels such as the earlier discussed RHS kernel is predicted using the ECM model. By combining the single kernel predictions with an estimate of the communication costs, we can derive the prediction for an implementation. Implementations are ranked by their performance. Only a subset of the best variants is then used 
for further tuning or during code generation. Coffsight automatically derives the kernel predictions using the Kerncraft tool. Kerncraft, however, does not yet support the YAST optimizations. Therefore, we integrated YASTSight into Offsight as an alternative backend in order to predict our perk variants. Next, we will exemplarily show the tuning results for Wave3D on AMD ROM. The figures compare the predicted and measured performance of different perk variants. The shown variants are derived from perk implementations A and F by applying analytical spatial tuning and different vector folds. Fold 114, for instance, corresponds to our 1D folding in the set direction. Corresponding predictions are shown with dotted lines. Predictions and measurements agree well. In total, our ranking on AMD ROM considered 16 different variants from two implementations A and F, four vector foldings per implementation, and per implementation variants with either analytical tuning applied or not applied. The following table summarizes the results. Across all problem sizes and variants, the mean deviation was 10%. The performance loss metric describes the loss in performance caused by executing the variant selected by the ranking instead of the actual measured best variant. Ideally, selected and best variant are the same and we suffer no performance loss. For our test case here, the mean performance loss was well under 5%. A maximum performance loss occurred for very small problem sizes, while losses were minimal for all remaining sizes. We have thus seen that the simple analytical model introduced in this presentation is sufficient to attain a proper ranking for the perk variance considered. In this video, we have introduced the basics of our YASTSight tool. YASTSight combines YASC with the analytical ECM model. Further, we have demonstrated YASTSight's three key use cases. First of all, YASSite can be used to predict and tune the performance of stencil codes. This was successfully shown in the paper on an AMD ROM and an Intel Cascade Lake machine. Therefore, the ECM model's layer condition analysis has to be extended to include vector folding and victim caches, and the application of the ECM model to AMD ROM was the first of its kind. Next, we also demonstrated that YASCSite can be used for the detect bottlenecks and guide performance optimization. And third, YASCSite can also be integrated with external tools such as Offsite to tune more complex applications. For more information, please contact the authors. Thank you for your interest.